Hello, and welcome to Gateway to Privacy, a podcast from global law firm KNL Gates, where we discuss the latest developments and best practices in today's data protection, privacy, and security industry. We hope you enjoy this discussion. Please reach out to suggest topics or guests or with questions about data privacy law. Everyone, welcome back to our podcast, to our second episode. This is again Eleonora Cullari from the Milan Candle Gates office. And hi, everyone. This is Camille from the Paris office at Candle Gates. And I'm really happy to be invited to participate in this podcast initiative. Hi, Camille. Thanks for being here today. Thanks for welcoming me and thanks for accepting to talk with me about this very interesting topic in the privacy field. For sure. It's going to be fun also for our audience. As to today's topic, it's not a new one, but it's definitely very interesting because it's all about processing personal data related to health through applications. That is to say that is uh, something that is very common nowadays. And apparently lots of apps have been fined for this. So this is what we're talking about. More precisely, we've been, our attention has been focused on the case issued by the Italian Supervisory Authority last July, the so-called Sionsonics uh, case. That is to say that um, this American company, U.S. established company, processed personal data related to health to basically uh, users and recipients of the subjects um, located here in the European Union. What happened is that an employee of this U.S. company sent an email with everybody like reading actually uh, the content of the email, the marketing email, basically marketing a new product in relation to health issues. And more than 2,000 people were in copying this marketing communication diabetic product. And of course, this implied that 2,000 people learned that all the others in copy um, had problems in relation to their data and in relation to their health, in relation to their diabetic conditions. So, of course, since there has been a data breach, the company notified this data breach to the supervisory authority. And from that moment on, of course, the government started an inspection that ended with a fine for, of course, not compliance with GDPR. More precisely, uh, this decision is quite interesting because, of course, the grant has confirmed that emails are personal data because, of course, names and surnames are visible and readable, and those are definitely personal data. And even though it was a marketing communication, the marketing communication was related to a specific product, related to a specific health issue. So that meant that everyone in copied course had the same problem and apparently data subjects has also complained with the company for this reason and that is the reason why um, it had to notify the breach to the guarantee and once the guarantee starts an inspection and this actually applies to every jurisdiction basically here in the European Union inevitably more Pandora spaces open as in the case at stake uh, I think there are, of course, many aspects that have to be discussed in relation to this decision. As for concerned, since the Grant's decision also stresses a lot about this aspect, uh, we have to remember that it is one of the six legal bases that allows the processing of personal data. And in order to be valid, it has to be freely given, specific, informed, and it has also to be an unambiguous indication that that subject wishes to have his or her personal data processed. So basically, this is what we understand by reading Article 4 jointly with Article 7 GDPR and other recitals. Um, basically, this means that the data subjects have to have a real choice uh, when providing their consent. That is to say that they do not have to feel as if they are unable to refuse to withdraw their consent or as if the withdrawal or the not provision of this consent might have some detrimental consequences. Um, so this is when the consent is freely given. And also we have to remember that when a data controller collects personal data on the basis of consent and Basically, there is the specific box requiring for that consent in relation to specific purpose. 
of the box doesn't have to be pre-flagged. A pre-flagged box, we have to remember, does not represent a fully given consent, so is not compliant under GDPR. Article 27 of the GDPR is pretty crystal clear in this respect. And basically, it states an obligation every time Article 3.2 applies. That is to say that Every time this provision applies, the controller or the processor in the case of stake, definitely the controller shall designate in writing a representative in the union that in, there was not. And actually, this, of course, opens the door for talking about data transfer to the states that we do know is a pretty hot topic right now. And also makes me think about the Dr. Lieb case in France, right? Yeah, so it happened in 2029 in the middle of the COVID crisis. And uh, it was in the context of a, it was a partnership that was uh, taken between uh, Duxolib and uh, the French Ministry of Health. And so they decided to allow people to take the appointments to get the COVID shots through the app Duxolib. So the Duxolib is like the app through you, uh, the one you get the appointments with your doctor with. So, yeah, they had this partnership and the fact that Dr. Lieb used at that time um, the American company AWS to host the data, the appointment data, it was quite polemic. And some professional associations uh, decided to take action and bring that action to the Conseil d'État, which is the administrative supreme court in France. And they said that, well, this uh, hosting through the AWS company was supposed to get the health data, or that was supposed to be health data, but or at least the information that was contained in the appointments data that was transferred to the US. So the question was whether it should be stopped or not, because it was an urgent procedure uh, before the Conseil d'État. And so the Conseil d'État said, and uh, that was the real argument that saved this partnership at that time was say that uh, the appointments did not contain any health data, but it was like data that contained like just the information about the people being admissible or not to get the flu shot, but not really health data. And so that's, yeah, the reason why the partnership did not stop at that time, at least on the urgent procedure. So I don't know whether like it would still be the same but the fact that it was in the middle of covid crisis might have um played a real role and weighted on the decision that's for sure um because i actually was thinking that uh during the lockdown period covid19 situation across the globe the processing of personal data related to health especially through hubs has increased enormously and this actually happened to you a couple of months when vaccines were actually kind of mandatory, of course, depending on the countries and the jurisdictions, but see, you know, also like reserving your spot to receive the vaccine, you know, and all these. So this is a pretty, pretty hot topic because, um, of course, processing paths and that are related to health online or through cloud systems, of course, exposes to huge risks. And this basically implies that you as a company is to implement all those technical measures as per Article 32 of GDPR, the importance of actually training your employees, as we have already seen also in our episode one, because um, actually in this case, the Pandora's vase has been opened because of a mistake done by an employee. So it's all about that, training about the importance about processing certain kind of data, especially depending on the kind of company and the kind of the core business related to the company. And also that we are in the middle definitely of a war between the US and the EU in relation to the processing of personal data, European data subjects, EU data subjects. It reminds me kind of the war between the rebels and the galactic empire of Star Wars. Yeah. It's kind of, it's a pretty um, strong contrast. And, you know, you do, we do see always the supervisory authorities in the European Union fining for all these aspects related to data transfer. Dr. Lieb was in France and was kind of a very important case at those times. And in the case of Simsonics, he said, of course, the GDPR compliance was not that solid in 
implemented, surgically implemented. And, and of course, the fact that they did not comply with certain criteria, and especially with Article 27 implied, of course, defined from the GDPR. So this highlights the fact that if you are a company that is based in the States and is interested in providing services to the other subjects located in the EU, or vice versa, anyway, you are a company established in the European Union, but you do provide your service to the other subjects located in the EU, it is incredibly important anyways to train your employees to, to have a solid uh, GDPR compliance. That is the key. Well, in general, the thing that I've noticed working with uh, companies is that people do not really seem to grasp the fact that a data breach is not only like being attacked or being in a ransomware, but also the like the divulgation, uh, the the spread of personal data by human error is also a data breach. So that's why. Training people is so important to make them understand that breaching data breach is like, yeah, what can happen on every day. Like you can, you can miss send an email and maybe forget about who you are writing to because you're writing to Alexander and you're writing, in fact, to Alexandra. Yeah, that's not, that's not the right person. And it's already a data breach, even if it's one person. In that case, it was like 2000 person and it was a pretty big data breach but in that case it involved a lot of person and it involved like one of the arguments two of the arguments that struck me the most is that um it was 2000 persons but the company Sensonix said that it involved maybe assistance or not all not only the the people that were concerned about the health data like it was not about the patients only and I don't think that the Garante received that information and processed it in a way that it would make the company less uh, liable for that. Another argument that I found quite funny, in fact, is that uh, they said that the person who sent the email to the wrong persons or in BCC, not in BCC, but in CC, he was working remotely. And it was during COVID and he was alone and that's what made him make the mistake. So that's quite interesting saying that in February when this happened, the person was working remotely and make that uh, error because I don't know, it shouldn't be, shouldn't be an argument, valid argument. But yeah, that's yeah. Right. That right, the best, that's right, the short. Yeah, you always have to find arguments when you have to reply to, uh, of course. So you, you do find whatever sounds reasonable at uh, that moment in time. But the reality is that it's all about being aware about the consequences of processing personal, putting you as a data subject, your personal data related to health on these apps, and also the sensibility of the companies that process this data in training their employees. Just remember that you always need to be trained whatever you're doing in life, of course. If you're a lawyer, you need training. If you're an engineer, you need training. And also if you are a person, an employee that processes personal data, you have to be trained and companies have to put a lot of attention in that. Every employee is basic that process personal data requires kind of the Jedi training, you know, so you have to be part one and then you become the Jedi Knight and the Jedi Master also personal data within your company. Uh, that is kind of a path you have to go to and basically if you, if companies actually invest in the very beginning in training their employees, uh, actually they do not have to pay them more, uh, you know, the legal counsels for replying, to, you don't know, for, uh, first of all, to notify that the breaches to the supervised authorities and then to reply and to study to all the uh, memoirs and um, to all the documents issued by the supervised authorities. So, you know, the more I think you play the background, the more you're actually protecting you as a company and your clients and also your employees, because then, of course, you also have to take certain kind of decisions also under a labor law point of view. And basically, I think this is pretty much the same that happened in Luxembourg with a case issued by the CEPD in 2021. That was a similar case where yeah, you know, that the company had to notify the breach of personal data just because um, employees multiple times 
sent emails with everyone in copy, in clear copy, not in BCC, but in CC. So uh, apparently this is something that's very common in every jurisdiction. Yeah, actually, the CNPD was pretty harsher on uh, this company. We don't know the name of this company because the name was anonymized, but we know that the fine was up to 135,000 euros. And in the case of the Italian one, it was 45,000 euros. So, uh, yeah, the case was quite similar. The a person sent this email to one person and it was a mistake and it included like health reports. So it was more in depth about the information about the patient, but the patient had to bring the case to the um, the supervisory authority who decided to take the case and uh, investigate it. And yes, it resulted in a much higher fine than the Italian one, but quite similar yeah. and always always not a good idea, always opening the Pandora box. No, because of course you are obliged to not further the breach of the supervisory authority. And of course that opens up to the possibility that you do receive inspections from the, the authority itself and the other authorities that are related to the same. And of course, they will find out everything about your GDPR compliance and not only about that, but also about the other obligations that might change according to each jurisdiction that can lead a company to additional fines. So one leads to another one. It's like it's like another episode you know, of a saga. It's not... <laughs> Here's the beginning and the ending of another one. Or like the Marvels, you know, since you're a huge fan of the Marvels, you know, there are so many chapters of that. It's pretty much the same. Uh, one episode. What if? The other one. What if? <laughs> <laughs> what if I didn't open the door to the supervisory yeah. authority? And uh, what if I trained my employees under a data protection point of view? You know, this scenario would have been different maybe since Sonic so wouldn't have had to. In this case, it's in Sonic, but it can be any, of course, other company. Because we do not know their details, but what if a company trains its employees so that this kind of data breach does not occur, and you then you do not read your names across the European Union for the fines issued by the local supervisory authorities? What if? Definitely. So yeah, this is the way. The way. The way in general uh, <laughs> to to train to train your employees and to uh, also one one thing we we mentioned earlier but about the italian decision is that um they did have information because they they had like this uh, major data page but also when opening the pandora box when the supervisory authority decided to investigate the case they realized that the company had this app that was possible to download on mobile phone that was accessible and that had been downloaded by 3,000 people, more or less. Yeah. So they realized that they made the, the whole process through downloading and creating an account. And they realized that the consent to the privacy policy was not like specific. But yeah. because, because it concerned half data, it was, it was supposed to be really specific. But in that case, the company made this major error to like have the privacy policy included in the EULA, the end user license agreement. So the whole process was just like one click and it was over. So in no way was the data subject and the patients like informed about what would happen with their health data in general or their data in general. It's true. You actually reminded me of um, an experience I had with a client that was pretty reticent in using more clicks in the final process for the acceptance of the terms and conditions and the privacy policy. Um, in that situation, remember, there were, it was necessary for GDPR compliance issues to have more consents, you know, to have more flags. And because every box costed a certain amount of money, they did not want to invest in that. So, of course, it was like, okay, this is the fact. This is true. This is what you have to do. And if you want to take the risk, this is what you're risking. So, that really makes sense just for this small amount of money to reach something bigger because you're like processing you know sensitive data you cannot have just one flag you need more flags for each concept if every purpose is a processing is a different one always take that in mind and sometimes yeah it's hard to make understand which are the risks because there are decisions just like this one but it's just an example among an ocean a galactic ocean <laughs> or other measures yeah, this is why you need to invest in your marketing better ones. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 
Absolutely, yes, because they are the future. <laughs> um, but yeah, absolutely, that is another urgent topic, and uh, sometimes it's not very clear because there is not yet yeah, this huge awareness, and there may be actually also one of the purposes of this podcast is to bring more awareness also about these aspects because they then a relevant part of each measure that we analyze or that inspire us to talk about specific topics, just like in the case of steak. But yes, definitely. Um, you have to invest in this. You have to, you know, have a consistent IT team, a consistent legal team and train your employees when they do process personal data, especially taking into consideration the nature of the data. And the fact that nowadays, Applications technology are a huge part of our life and everything that belongs to us is online, is on cloud. Data, personal data is the new oil of this century. So we have to really pay attention to that. And maybe I think this is also the reason why we do have lots of fun in advising our clients when it's about these topics. It's about also having a huge vision of all the context and the possible consequences. It's not about you have to do this, you have to do that. It's about this is what you actually risk. This is what your clients risk. This is what your employees risk. This is part of being like a lawyer. You're not here to make the decisions. You are here to bring the keys to allow them to take a decision. And you're not here to like um, maybe make anyone struggle. You're just here to like give the facts, give the risk is and if you're willing to take the risk because you have all the information then take it and if you want to go to the dark force go exactly go but you know what you're risking of course yoda knew exactly what it was risking when you fought against palpatine in episode three to enter the sea he knew that so it's pretty much the same you know that palpatine may represent your supervisory authorities actually so it's kind of because of course you're going to be fined if you once you notify that a breach and you have to or once someone else notifies that other breach or notifies you or not compliance with the legal framework you have to choose actually it's true when you you do process certain kind of pass you when you process pass other in general especially certain kind of personal data you do have to take as a businessman, as business company decision. Do you want to be on the dark side or on the light side? Do you want to be a Jedi or a Sith? That is the question. When you're implementing, yes, GDPR compliance, that is the question I think for every business. Do you want to be a Sith or do I want to be a Jedi? <laughs> <laughs> oh, do I, do I want to be Thanos or do I want to be an Avenger? <laughs> <laughs> that works. That works. <laughs> No, I'm on. I know, I know you're a huge Marvel fan. So, so yes. Anyway, Camille, thanks for being here today. Thanks to our audience. If you want to reach out to us, you do have our contact details. And yes, may the enforcement be with you. And when it's about taking decisions in your GDPR compliance, always wonder if you want to be a Jedi or a Sith or Thanos or an Avenger. I vote for Iron Man anyways. Take a smile for Avenger. What's your favorite? Oh. Um, Groot. Groot's my favorite. Yeah, such as I love Grogu. I love Grogu as much as you do love Groot. Yeah. Perfect. Who yeah. would win? Grogu versus Groot. In cuteness. Um, yeah. GDPR. GDPR always wins. <laughs> I was above them. GDPR compliance always wins. Love that. So anyway. Thanks for being here. Thanks to our audience. See you in our very next episode. Bye. Thanks, bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of Gateway to Privacy. To listen to past episodes and receive notices for new episodes, subscribe by searching Hub Talks. That's H-U-B Talks in your favorite podcast app. Tune in next time for more data privacy insights.